Guys, this video is brought to you by our friend Barty Helmy at Premier Fight Picks. I would love for you guys to go check him out, by the way. If you enjoy watching fighting, if you want to get into handicapping these things, but you need a little bit of help on what the good picks are. Look, I think for an analysis, I know for betters, Barty has got a 70% strike rate. That has been publicly tracked over five years. And by the way, what have you done for me lately? Well, 17 of the last 20 UFC pay-per-views, Bardia has won. Oh, and by the way, he perfectly called the featherweight title fight. Not only did he take Teporia, he took Teporia by knockout. Not only did he take Teporia by knockout, he took it in the second round. I want you guys to go to Premier Fight Picks. You can get in for weekly, monthly, even yearly subscriptions. You're going to get a full analysis if you want it. But more importantly, Barty is going to show you where he's putting his own money. Check out Barty and go to premierfightfix.com right now. Follow him on social media. You go over to Instagram. You're going to get an analysis every now and then. You're even going to get a pick or two at Premier Fight Picks. You can also follow him on Twitter with the kids now call X at PFP Handicapping. Check Barty out right now. Taporia Volkanovsky, here's what happened. So. Leading into this fight, I have implored you, the audience, to understand. Whenever there's a fight, both guys in the fight know who's going to win. Now, that is a very broad stroke statement to the point that it's a little bit irresponsible. However, if you go and talk to a group of fighters, they'll tell you that mm, I'm basically right. Like two guys are going to try and they're trying to get confidence and they're going to work really hard. And it's not a matter of I'm throwing it or I'm going to give it to you or I'm going to let this go easy. But they both have a very good idea who's stronger than who, who's better than who, and who's going to get over on the other. So now, what if you're betting on these fights or you're giving an analysis or you're, you've been handicapping them, you're watching the interviews and you're trying to figure out who is being sincere versus who is trying to convince themselves. And you'll always hear when a fighter's talking trash, maybe something like that, he's trying to get into his opponent's head and there's not a truth to it. Nobody's trying to get into their opponent's head. There's not a strategy to do that. They're trying to convince themselves. That's all they're doing. The only head and the only mind that the guy talking the trash or talking big and brash, it's himself. So when we had the buildup into Volkanovsky and Tapori started to break loose a little bit, he started to come out of his shell. He started to talk about, you know, you're an old guy. And he coupled them all in there, Ortega and Rodriguez and Holloway, all of you can pack your bags and get out of here, right? When, he, when he's doing that, I'm watching that and I'm trying to assess, does he mean it? Is he there yet? Because I can tell you when he started, the answer was no. Not only did he not believe he was the best, he didn't believe he was going to beat Volkanovsky. He didn't believe he was going to stay undefeated. He didn't believe that he was in front of all those great names I just threw out there. But you get about partway through, and all of a sudden, I'm watching his interviews, and I'm seeing it coming. I'm going, okay, he's starting to convince himself. He's getting closer. And by the time this press tour was done, I knew that Teporia had 95% convinced himself. He had succeeded at what he set out to do. He didn't convince Volk. He didn't get in Volk's head, but that's not a real thing anyway. That's a misinterpretation. He got in his own head and he was starting to convince himself. The question now comes, can he do it? Can he do what he's now talked himself into doing? And if he can, if he's going to beat Volkanovsky, how is he going to do it? I think that Taporia's greatest weapon is his hands. And I know his background, or at least if you wanted to start, what did he first get into combat with? It was wrestling, specifically Greco-Roman wrestling. So now you're talking about a lot of clinch work, right? Greco-Roman wrestling, to put in perspective for you, is what Randy Couture did so well. So when Randy Couture would do clinch work, when you saw that, when you saw dirty boxing, that term even being coined, came from Randy Couture doing in MMA what he did in wrestling, which is clinch, but then adding strikes, okay? It's as simple as that. But I don't want to tell you that that's what Teporia does best. I really think it's his hands. I think it's his speed. I think his defense. I think it's his motion. I think it's his footwork. I mean, I think that he's really a beautiful talent to watch straight up pugilistically. So can he do that with Volk? Nobody's ever outstruck Volk. And there's really not anybody that's even come close. And before you correct me and tell me that Islam knocked him out on his feet, I understand that he threw a head kick that caught him and knocked him out. I won't concede to you that there was a massive striking battle and that Islam had shown a superiority in the understanding 
of strikes to Volk. That's, that's not what I saw. So when this fight gets started, I thought Volk was winning. I mean, I will be very curious because those scorecards are out there. The three judges cage side at the end of the first round would have marked the sheet and turned it in to the California State Athletic Commission, specifically Andy Foster. So those numbers are out there. I just want to disclose to you guys, I don't have them yet. And I looked for them. But I think that the judges gave that first round to Volkanovski, and that's very relevant, right? If you want to talk about Volkanovski, he got old or he got tired or, or there's residue from him losing his last fight. Like, I think those are really fair talking points. I just don't think that's what happened. And if we do start to go in that direction, you're not only insulting Volkanovski, but you're also taking away from the victory of Tapori. And I don't think that's right because it's not what I saw. I saw two really good guys go fight, and one guy is better. High stakes. All chips were in. So when we talk about that, and we talk about what Taporia was able to do, you, you've also got your conditioning factors, right? Like you're going to see who's better and who the better athlete is and who's crisper. You're going to see that in these matches, but you're going to see that for the first two to three to four minutes. By the time the second round comes around, you're now in a tough guy contest. By the time guys have already gone to their corner, they're a little bit sore. They do what's called taking inventory. Well, they start to say, okay, this is how fatigued I am. Or this is how sore my leg is if my leg was kicked or my eye if my eye is getting swollen. And I now need to times that by four because there's four rounds left. Can I withstand that? This is all the conversation they start having. And then the referee says, are you ready? And the stools go out and the seconds go out. The cage door shuts and then they're back at it. And most times a guy is now looking for a way out. But can he find it? Can he find his way out? Or can he keep and stay in the battle? And these guys were just exchanging very well. Volkanovski was doing great with his jab. Taporia was doing a great job of cutting him off. And I didn't hear enough of that talked about. Like, Taporia was taking ground and he was cutting off. Volk was having to be on his bike. He was having to move a little bit more than we have seen at times past. I really felt as though Volk was going to be the one to force the clinch and Volk was going to be the one to force the wrestling. And when we've seen Volk need a takedown, and it doesn't matter if that was against Rodriguez, if that was against Ortega, or even in his battles with Max Holloway. When Volk has needed a takedown, he's gone out and found it. He's done it with straight double legs. How about from the clinch when he hits those inside trips and tangles and brings them to the mat? When Volk needs to get on top, he can do it. He did not feel that urgency. He did not feel that urgency in the six, seven, eight minutes that we saw him in there with Taporia. Now, it might have come later. Perhaps Volk was getting comfortable. Perhaps Volkanovsky, like me, felt Volkanovsky was winning those exchanges. There was no need to mix it up. But if you were to look back at boxing is more guilty than MMA, if you were to look back at a guy who's knocked out in his previous contest, a stand-up battle does not favor him right away. He's going to be a little bit slower. He's not going to be as comfortable. He's not going to have the same volume and the same output. The reason for that is every time you move a hand away to touch your opponent, that's what exposes your own face, right? It's these hands coming back. This is what protects you. So if a guy gets knocked out, he gets hesitant to let those hands go. I think Volkanovski got comfortable. I think Volkanovski liked it. I think Volkanovski said, look, I've already done this for one frame. I just got four more to go. And of those four, I only need to win two of them, right? Like I think he was doing the math when all of a sudden Depore stepped in and shut his lights off. I think if we could go back, and everything in life is hindsight, right? But I think if we go back, I don't know that Taporia had another style that he could have fought. Meanwhile, I do believe Volkanovski had options. I do believe Volk is more powerful when they're clinched up. I have seen Volk's wrestling be wildly effective when he wants it to be, and it's just one of those situations, right? It's just one of those questions. With all the styles and all the strategies, with everything you work on in the gym, with the emergence of the groundwork, Craig Jones himself working with Volkanovsky. But if you're comfortable doing something, if you're finding success with your jab, if you're finding that you can keep him at bay, if you're finding that this young guy that's supposed to be faster than me isn't faster than me, I don't know that I could blame Volkanovsky. I don't know that in between rounds that I could blame his coaches and cornermen for telling him, hey, what you just did, Go out and do it again. It seems like the right thing to do. But it's a risky game. And when you get in those firefights, it's not always a matter of technique and it's not a matter of power. You guys hear that in MMA? How hard does this guy hit? You want to know how hard he hits? He hits hard enough. 
If he puts the hand where you don't want the hand, you're going to go down. It's, it's one of these situations. And it made for an incredibly interesting moment because one thing, and I'm not sold on the idea that Ilya Teporia truly believe that all these guys are old, they're all done, and he's the new thing. I, I watched him start to convince himself and talk himself into it. But one thing that will change a guy's confidence, that will get him over the hump, and that will put him in the position that he's telling the world he's already in is if you give him a world championship. So if you think you've seen impressive things from Ilya Teporia, I promise you, you haven't seen nothing yet.